Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back in my shop. Mitch is filming. He says he has a lot of film today. We're on, on the Tiger Cub and last time we looked for an oil leak that we couldn't find. There was a lot of comments and I think compressed air is the best way. And I like the idea of a, a bicycle inner tube going over the filler and then you can hose clamp it and then you can check for leaks that way. So I think that might happen. In the meantime, we've got to make a mount for the battery. This is the battery. It's just a gel cell, nothing fancy. And I was making a part, you, you know, you have to start somewhere on a project like this. So, and so the battery has to be somewhere. So I took a piece of cardboard, I made a shape. This goes around the frame. We're gonna go over to the frame, over to the bike in a moment and I'll show you where this goes. So this is the piece that I cut out of a piece of metal like so. You know, I put the cardboard on there. I went to the bandsaw and I did some shaping. And then over on the lathe, Mitch is gonna show you an image of how I had this mounted on a shaft. I put a bolt through and then I could spin that and that's how that got to be round. So a part of this was done on the lathe then I did some hand filing and things like that. I drilled a hole here, I didn't go through, I was very careful. And so this goes on the bike and then there's one bolt, six millimeter, Allen screw and that hangs down. So we've got that going like that. And then we've got these rubber mounts because I want the battery to be rubber mounted. So these are gonna get, I'm gonna drill three holes and I'm gonna drill the holes slightly out of, they're gonna be slightly offset. So like one, two, three, that's a bit of an exaggeration so that it still retains some uh, a, a stability in, in this plane. So that's gonna go like that. One, two, three. I'll space this one down a little bit. Then I'll drill a hole in here because the, the on off switch for the lighting system, that's gonna go through there like that. And then this plate here, these will screw into the plate and the plate will be trimmed down and that's how the battery will mount like that and then the horn will come off like that in behind. So we got a bit of work to do. Let's go over to the bike now and I'll show you a few things. Thanks for tuning in. I've had the oil tank off the bike for about a week so there's no oil coming out of the tank and I put this fresh piece of cardboard down last night at six o'clock. Look, that's where it's coming from. I got, I got three drips. So if you go straight up, that's where it's coming from. So we'll have to keep on working on that. Here's the mount that I made and then here's the plate. So this is what's gonna happen. That's, that's where the rubber mount goes. This is a bit heavier. And so that's gonna go there. And then the battery mounts right onto this with some, I call them zap straps. And so there is room right there. So that's where the battery is gonna go, right, right about there. And then the horn, I think, I'm gonna have a alloy plate on the back and the horn can get mounted like that. So the horn will be kind of under the seat in the dry. It's not facing forward, but whatever. That's my plan. So we're gonna cut some metal. We're gonna go to the bandsaw. We need another piece that's as wide as the battery. So we'll go mark that out and then we'll go on to the mill and make the sides nice and flat, milled, a few steps. That's an easy way to mark it out. You just, just trace the battery. I'm marking now. These are an inch OD, 
So I'm marking in half an inch. And it doesn't really matter where they are because I'm going to draw both of these at the same time. Oh look, they're the same size. It's the same width and I didn't even measure. Can you see how these are out of line? These are over about um, almost a quarter of an inch. So these, these rubber bushings, they're going to be offset. It'll just make it more, more secure this way. If they were all right in line, it would flex more. So I'm interested to see how much flex you do get when they're out of line just a little bit. And then this is going to go here. Uh, we might have it offset. Yeah, well, I think we'll offset it as well. So then it's, it's a little bit outside, more towards the outside of the bike. Be easier for me to reach. And this is, is it half inch? Yeah, if I drill a, I drill a hole a little bit less than half an inch, that would go in there nicely. Okay, next I, I drill five millimeters because that's the tap drill size for a, a six millimeter thread. You all knew that, right? I know you, I know you know that. This is the test. Oh, look at, that's a pretty good fit. That's a good fit. It's not easy tapping straight and you have to have an eye. So as I turn it slowly, I'm pressing down and I'm looking at the perpendicularness of it all. Is that really a word? I heard about this guy called Alan, Alan Milliard and he's got just a hacksaw. I think mine's actually nicer than his and he hacks all his engines right in half and welds them back together again. Amazing. So we're looking for gaps. I guess I'm a straight tapper. Okay, so what's next is the switch goes in and you see how there's not enough thread? It's not enough thread to go on there. Oh, we also got to put on the uh, on the position, on off, and then there is no thread left. So what we have to do on the back, right here, this goes in this way, like that. So we gotta mill it out. We're gonna mill down about halfway, or something like that. got on going up. That's pretty customary I believe. Look 
Okay, so that looks pretty good. I have to shorten these up, but I don't have to do that right now. Okay, so if I hold this in the vise, Okay, so it's, it still flexes a little bit, but you can see that. If these were in line, it would flex more. So that looks okay. See this here? This is, this is the clutch, obviously. This is the, is, is the reservoir for the master cylinder. See this piece here? That's what I'm thinking of making. These will be larger. And then there's a 3 16 rod that goes as a connector because all of the weight here is supported by by this this is really just to stop it moving so while i was lying in bed last night not able to sleep that's what i was thinking about my lathe is a mess i have been busy Apologies to all those people that think my shop is impeccably clean because that's a fairy tale. Okay. Look at that. Hitting the Loctite now. Okay, so we'll put this on and then that's the first piece for the stabilizer. We're, we're calling this little piece on the bottom, it's the stabilizer. Okay, so this has to join up to here somewhere. What I did here is I counterboard it because we're going to put a Allen screw right down inside of there. So, so the head of the Allen screw will be hidden. So now we cut this off and then we take a piece of 3 8 3 16 rod and we bend it. And then we, we do some TIG welding. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm taking some 330 seconds bronze brazing rod and this is going to be like a, a template of sorts. So we'll just get a nice little bit of a better bend in there. Something like that. Okay. So I have to figure out the bend for this, so it's easier working with something thin. Can you see what's happening here? I'm gonna hold that like that, and then I need a piece to come up from here and then go sideways. So I'm gonna cut this off, and we'll see how I'm doing with this. So this is my cutters. Okay, it's too long, but that's okay. So I think we're looking for something like this. Can you see how that might, might work? Comes up like that, it's hard to see. And comes up like that and it joins on like that. And then once that's joined on, that's when I drill the hole. So. Okay. 
So we have to bend this, and I'm gonna have to figure out how to make a nice bend there. So it can be, it doesn't have to be as sharp a bend as that. It can have a, a larger radius. That's what's gonna hold it. So we, we're getting close. Did you see this? It just, it just leaked a couple more drops of oil right there. It came off the exhaust pipe and I think the frame or something like that. So it's an ongoing battle. It's like having beavers in your backyard who keep building a dam. Okay, we're bending. Okay, so I'm lifting it up slightly. Spacer. Removing spacer. That's pretty close. Okay, do you see what I'm doing? This is my template. So one cut. And you can't see that, it's under my thing. There you go, there's the, there's the two cuts. So, we'll see how that works out. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so it's gonna be interesting to see how the angle works out, how we're doing. I guess I can always align it. Well, what do you think? That's, that's not bad, is it? For a just eyeball with a big fat red felt pen. I'm gonna braise it. And then when we, when we braise it, we'll make the little piece that comes out here. I'm, I'm gonna use half inch round. It just, just holds it up. And then, uh, yeah, that turned out okay. Not bad. Oh, yes. Need a six millimeter thread on the other side. We're gonna do a rapid tap. See the snap of the wrist there? Happens pretty quick.
Mm, good. And then I got a scriber. So I go inside. That tells me where to drill the hole. Yeah, that'll work like that. So there's the there's the shelf. Everything's clear. Okay. Assembly time. This needs to be anodized. I think this little this little guy would look nice when it was if it was nickel plated. That would be cool. So we're just going to put it all together. These bolts, these threads need to be shortened. Okay. So look, it's got a little bit of flex for the battery for shock absorption. I'll put some two-sided tape in there so that the battery can't slide around. And I'll probably I'll add an extra zap strap down there. So you get the idea, I think. There you go. On off. Mitch and I would like to thank you for hanging around in our shop while, while we filmed this episode. Actually, that was a lot of fun. It was pretty fast paced, but hope you enjoyed it. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffees, much appreciated. Helps the flow of the show. See you next time. Take care.